Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. Today's selection comes from our patrons, who are constantly leading me through a fabulous musical journey. I've been wanting to return to both Sharon Danadel and Tarja Turinen, so I'm very grateful that this video will feature them both. Let's get to it! I want to talk about this intro. A lot of really cool choices. I always get very happy when I hear the epicness that is made from combining already epic orchestration, like the kind of orchestration you hear in blockbuster trailers, right? Combine that with metal, with sound that has more drive and more distortion. You have a huge variety of sounds already available just from an orchestra, and that can feel epic. And it has a timeless quality as well because uh, there's so much tradition involved as well. And then there is a, a modernness and sort of a disruption in the sound when you start having distortion involved as well from anything that's going through essentially like electronic signals. And I think that this combination is a great combination for a soundtrack for the ends of times, for something that apparently has some nuclear bombs and uh, buildings that are just crumbling. Very, very, very cool. Also, the ambient sounds in the beginning right away were cool. The squeaking chair and a squeaking window? Or somebody wiping a window. Has a lot of detail in the video. <laughs> that, I think that's a squeaking chair. Maybe it's just a squeaking floorboard. Yeah, really cool fully. Feels super epic. I think this is the most towards pop that I've heard either of their voices go. I've heard Sharon's be very angelic, ethereal, <coughs> and apparently it makes me sneeze. I'm, I'm expelling all of the bad spirits inside because her voice is just so angelic. <laughs> also, uh, Taria's voice I've heard in a lot of classical things. She has an amazing Ave Maria album. And uh, has that warmth and power that I would really expect to have from an opera singer. And uh, both of the voices right in the verse, I think, they were definitely going more towards that contemporary styling. So it tends to be a little lower in pitches. Um, you need less, uh, less vowel modification, really easy to understand the text, um, tends to not be quite as open in the mouth as well at that point. Uh, and then you also have some creaking and a little like, uh, kind of sounds or, um, 
mannerism stylizations that are more towards pop as well. Again, a little more forward in the apparatus than some of their higher, more classical lines would be. I'm gonna go back a little. Oh, this first part is a really a great example of a darker awe that has a lot more loft in it um, from Tarya. And just think about the contrast and tone quality from that awe to what we're about to hear. The combination of that, the backing vocals, which are much more operatic or classical in nature, and the main melody, which is more contemporary in nature, is working very, very well. I also like the combination of their voices. There's, um, Sharon has definitely a brighter natural timbre, and Tarya definitely has a darker natural timbre, but they're working together very, very well. I wondered how they would go together because to me they have different fundamental voices, but they're still working in similar genres, right? So I feel like there needed to be some weaving and it's really happening. I love, I love the layering of this um, chorus in the background. <laughs> Right there. Right there is where the chorus comes in in the background. And I just, it, it has that epic feeling again. It's interesting, in, in Sharon's line in the verse, she goes down at the very end of her line and goes into a chestier sound that gets a little more of that warmth. And I like the way that that feels like a, a transition into Taria's voice, which has more of the natural warmth in it. I, I just, I also feel like the mics that they're recording on are bringing out a lot of the like beautiful facets in their voice. I'm kind of curious what mics they recorded on actually, um, cause I get so much clarity in each of the sounds without necessarily feeling like they're on different mics. I'm wondering if they were recording together or if they heard each other's sounds as they, like were they on tracks? Uh, maybe if they weren't able to record in the same room, were they recording in a similar online session or did they get the track from the other person? Because there's, a certain blending of the sounds that is happening and is working very, very nicely together. 
I just have to say also the words and the diction are coming through extremely well. Let's go back to those verses again. Oh, and this has got beautiful production quality. It's obviously been, uh, was given a lot of attention. Wow. There's a lot that's going on here, but I really get the central thing that I had read about before, which is essentially that uh, creativity, um, it only comes from working together, uh, that something beautiful can emerge from us. But when it's you and me, that that sort of doesn't lead to that cooperative, beautiful, creative um, work that can emerge from really people working together. I really love this theme partly because you're also getting these two wonderful powerhouse singers working together to sing it. But then uh, reading a little bit about the background, apparently this was inspired by a speech given by Peter von Ohm, um, and Sharon Adele said, his speech made a deep impression on us. His message being that the creation of a better world is only possible when you don't think about yourself or them, but just think about us. And so I like hearing these lyrics, you, me, them, us. It's really comparing and talking about that, uh, that feeling of community and I think coming together in a positive way, which is such a wonderful message. And then you see them working together, seeing these two women film together and this dystopian uh, society as well and understanding you know, what could happen versus maybe what paradise could be as well. Anyhow, I, I think that the lyrics are really beautifully written in this and wonderfully portrayed in the video. <laughs> The production on the vocals and the chorus is well done, especially because operatic vocals, classical vocals tend to be very dominating in sound. They are designed to be sung without a microphone. So when you have this very large sound and lots of layers of it too, it would be easy for that to cover up the contemporary melody which is not going to be as loud in person as those operatic vocals, but it's mic'd. And I think that they're quite close on the microphone. So that main line sounds a little more close, a little more direct because they're closer on the mic. But when they were singing their operatic vocals, they probably backed up further away um, to give it a little more distance. And then you also have some fancy post-production that's done on it to help give more distance with those backing vocals as well. I'm gonna go back one more time, check it out.
Oh, it's so nice to hear a truly beautiful legato operatic line in combination with all of this other great sound. I mean, I'm just, I'm such a sucker, I think, for a beautiful operatic line where it's this long, extended, you have some vibrato in there. It has, I feel like, so much feeling and emotion. Um, it almost, it has always, opera's always had something kind of primal in the sound to me, which I hear also in things like gutturals that I often hear with metal as well. So it's just so beautiful to hear in this context. If, ah. <laughs> I mentioned earlier a, a darker ah vowel. Um, definitely in Tyre's voice at this point, you hear a darker ah. It's one that's rounded. Uh, ahs can have different amounts of brightness. It really depends on shaping within your vocal tract, especially on, on tongue placement and the back of the tongue. You can have ah, ah, that has a little more rounding of the lips, especially to help round in the vocal tract. and. Um, it's important because a lot of times, operatically, you'll have a little more darkness in the sound. Not always, but sometimes. Um, and she definitely has more darkness in the sound. So you hear more rounding in the lips. And it's it's something I would encourage all of you, if you go see the opera or you're just watching an operatic clip, check out their lip shape. See if it does have more rounding there. See if it looks like maybe they're elongating the space here too, to create a little more depth in the sound as well. Uh, there's lots of really cool things you can do with that. Or, you know, check out the tongue shape because a brighter, a brighter awe, well, you'll often see like more of a ski slope kind of shape in the tongue. So uh, it's kind of fun to notice how mouth shapes affect sounds. <laughs> touching <laughs> this idea of working together to find a solution to such an awful ending that I would think is just the end of the world but they've actually worked together to say this isn't they didn't have paradise there but it's what they've got and they've made something better out of it together oh, I didn't expect that to be where the video went and it makes even more sense really really beautiful this is who we are, this Deep is what we got, no it's not. Okay, this is super gorgeous and it gives me the feels. I love the way I've seen different women within the metal community, especially, and in rock too. I see women that are fronting different bands or just 
you know, fantastic vocalists, they get along. I love it when I get to interview one woman and she talks about how this other woman in a different band is wonderful, how they talk about uh, high heels on stage. And um, you can really hear in their voices that they exchange tips and that together, rather than thinking of each other as the competition, they're working together and becoming better singers and better people and better communicators to their audience because of that. I think it's so beautiful to see both Taria and Sharon in this video together, hands together. It feels like they're really standing for that unity, for that us. And it's depicted excellently here. Ah. Beautiful, beautiful combination there. I think probably this is towards the end. Beautiful combination of a belt, which is, you know, some of the heaviest contemporary sound that you can make, and this beautiful, dark, again, lyric operatic line on top. Love this combination. Amazing. I just love how the theme of the song is so well represented by women in metal. It is a beautiful community, and I love the appreciation and support that I see being given to so many fantastic singers. If you would like to see a bunch of female metal vocalists analyzed, you can check out this playlist over here. And beyond that, I hope to see you in a video again soon. May you fall more in love with music every day. Thank you.